The human brain, the most complex mass of protoplasm on Earth, perhaps even in our galaxy. Today's topic is about memories. Every person out there has a significant memory or memories that make them who they are. Whether it was their birthday, a trip they'd went to with their friends, a big game they've won. As you sit down and remember these memories and you reconstruct them, you remember the colors, the smell, the way it made you feel, and how special that memory is to you. And as you see these memories walk and fly in front of your eyes like a film, let's rewind a bit. And look at how these memories are made. Now these memories that we remember are actually information that are stored in our brains. Memory is the factuality of the brain by which data or information is encoded, stored and retrieved when needed. Now memories or rather the bits of information that have been stored are formed through a three stage process which starts by encoding. Now memories are mental records of past events. As such, they consist of recollections of our personal experiences. Memories begin with the senses, since that's how we experience the world. If you think about it, your memories consist of remembrance of things you've sensed in the form of touch, taste, sound, sights, and smell. As you experience the world around you, your brain decides which information needs to be saved. If you remembered everything you sensed every moment of the day, your brain would soon be so overloaded that you wouldn't be able to function. So instead of remembering every little thing, your brain picks and chooses what's important. This is the information that forms your memory. Now the main part of your brain that does the work of processing memories is called the hippocampus. Scientists believe that the memories formed by the hippocampus get stored in various areas of the cerebral cortex, which is the large outer area of the brain, more commonly known as gray matter. Now, when your brain stores of memory, it makes another decision about how important that memory is. The brain consistently filters and prioritizes information to avoid becoming overloaded with unnecessary or unimportant information. Memory that only need to be retained for a brief time are put into short-term memories. The most important information eventually makes its way from short-term memory to long-term memory. This transition can take place because of the inherent importance of the information or as a result of repeated use or intentional repetition. Now, as we spoke about how these memories are formed, why do we actually forget something? So when you forget something, you aren't actually bad at remembering things. Rather, it's just your brain reorganizing so it can focus on more important things. There are even leading theories that your brain stores everything that ever happened to you in memory. It just only forms neural pathways to the memories that it deems important. Now memories, or rather the neural pathways that are used to recall them, are strengthened each time that we remember them. Now, actively practicing recalling a memory like studying for a test will increase your brain's ability to remember. So then, how can we get better at remembering things if we understand the basic principle? As we forget tiny details about our day, such as where you left your keys or your phone, how are memory athletes so capable of memorizing thousands of digits of pi? Let's take Yonja Wintersold for instance. Yonja Wintersold is a triple world record holding memory athlete who is capable of memorizing hundreds of digits in a minute. Now the real question is, are we capable of memorizing such huge amounts of data? Now as we mentioned, memory could be strengthened by repetition or other significant ways. However, Yonja Wintersold uses an ancient Greek technique called the memory palace. Memory palace is an imaginary location in your mind where you can store images. The most common type of memory palace involves making a journey through a place you know well, like a building or a town. Along that journey, there are specific locations that you always visit in the same exact order. The locations are called loci, which is Latin for locations creating a visual story around the words or character that you are trying to remember. So for instance, let's say you're trying to memorize a sequence of numbers, which are 
2579136. You would imagine yourself in a familiar environment such as your house. Now let's claim that I'd always go to my room, open my closet, go to the living room and lay by the couch and open the TV. I would arrange these sequence of numbers throughout my pathway. So for example, my room would be number two and five. My closet would be number seven and number nine. And the living room would be number one. The couch would be number three. And lastly, the TV would be number six. Now, as I'm taking this regular pathway through the house, the sequence of numbers would always be attached to these specific locations. And by practicing these strategies over and over, you're actually strengthening the capacity of information your brain can process. Now, this technique is still used today by many, specifically super memorizers that use it to memorize thousands of digits of pi. Be sure to subscribe for new content and comment down below to introduce yourself.